Hi, hello, I am the Cyber Reef Guru. Thank you so much for watching. So over the last couple weeks or so, I have been doing a ton of work on my Onefinity CNC over there to create projects for an upcoming craft fair. So if you are in this same boat that I am in, that you need to create a number of projects, either all the same or a bunch of different projects, and you wanna batch them out, well, I wanna show you the process that I have been using to really help me streamline going from start to finish and minimizing the amount of downtime that I have with my machine. All right, let's go ahead and I'm gonna cut over to Fusion 360, show you some of the designs, and then take you over to the machine and show you how I do it and uh, what kind of process I follow. All right, let's get on with the video. So here we are in Fusion 360. What you see is the model here that I wanna create multiples of. It's just a simple butter board that uh, you can see on the internet. These are all the, the rage these days. So what I wanna do is I wanna take one of the models and I wanna duplicate it. So there's two ways to do this in Fusion 60. The first way is to create a manufacturing model and then manipulate that manufacturing model. So what a manufacturing model is essentially is a duplicate of your design, but you can manipulate it in the manufacturing works space and change things like move parts around, adjust sizes, scale things, and a variety of other things. And so it is still linked back to the original design, but it doesn't uh, manipulate or change the original design. So this is useful, especially here, if you want to uh, lay out a pattern of bodies, for example, you can do that in the manufacturing workspace in that manufacturing model uh, without affecting the original design. Now, in this case, the easiest way to do the pattern that we're looking for, however, is to literally pattern the G-code. So I'm gonna show that rather than the manufacturing model because it's just a little bit easier uh, actually to do than you know, creating the manufacturing model. If you do wanna create the manufacturing model, it's fairly straightforward. You just go into setup here, you say create manufacturing model, and then once it creates that manufacturing model, you right click on it and say edit model and then you can change it however you like move things around but let's go ahead and let's do the patterning process so what i have here is i've already created a setup here that we're going to do the uh, pattern of two and so i am going to go into the model here i am going to turn off some of these bodies so this is what we're looking at we want to pattern this one breadboard that is 18 millimeters tall okay so let's go ahead and edit the the setup here now because i copied it from a previous setup it's got some things already set up that we don't need so i'm going to go ahead i'm going to kill this i don't want to say that body i want this body so it automatically scales the size of the stock to this body and that's something you'd want to do if you want to create just one but in this case we actually want more than one so what we want to do is we want to tell it uh, no don't use the body size we want to use a fixed size box for example and then we can go here and set the size so these things are about 10 inches wide or so about 250 millimeters so let's go ahead and say that maybe it's 510 millimeters wide um, or uh, five, 510 millimeters wide for example, and then the depth is still uh, that 18 millimeters, or the Z height is 18 millimeters. So that goes here, and then the height here uh, at 10 inches should be fine. A 303 millimeters, so we want to, let's see, 305 millimeters, something like that. So what you have now is you have the thing centered in the model. So what we want to do is we actually want to move it to be uh, an offset here. So what that's done is it's moved our model in the stock area around a little bit. So uh, let's give it a little bit more of an offset here. So maybe 0.5, yeah and then 0.5. That should give us enough space where things are centered and everything's looking good. Okay, so I'm gonna click okay. And now here is the magic for creating your bulk pattering capabilities in Fusion 360. You right click on this guy, uh, which is the toolpath, and we're gonna edit the toolpath right off the bat. Uh, we're gonna clear out the original geometry here. We're gonna select our new geometry, select it just there. And then everything else should be the same. We're going to go ahead and hit Command G, generate the new toolpath. You can see there it's created just a single toolpath for now. Uh, but now we're going to go and select the toolpath and we're going to say add to new pattern, right? Uh, and the first thing it's going to ask you for here is you want a linear, linear pattern, a circular pattern, a mirror, this, this, that, and whatever. So we're just going to go ahead and stick with a linear pattern. We're going to say we're going to do a spacing and then we're going to select a direction. Now to select a direction, you have to select an axis. So the easiest way to do that is to go back to your model here, turn on your origin and select the axis you want to pattern it after. In this case, we want the x-axis. So we'll click on that guy right there. 
You can see now it's already added a second set of tool paths here. Uh, the distance that we want here again is about 10 inches. So we're going to go ahead and put 10 inches and see how that does. That looks a little big, 9.5. Uh, we'll just go with that for right now and see what happens. So now, now we have a pattern. It didn't uh, duplicate the, the model or the body or anything, it just duplicated the toolpath. So when we select the, the actual stock here, and then we select on the uh, pattern, you can see that it's got both, right? So if we command shift, uh, click both of them, you can see where your toolpaths are falling relative to your stock. So if our stock is this size, this will cut just like that. And so the beauty of this is you create one toolpath, you get it optimized for what you want it to do, and then you can pattern it as many times as you want. All right, so let's go ahead and edit this guy again. And let's say we wanted to have more of them or we wanted them in different directions, right? So we can certainly say quantity can now be three, just like that, and now you have three. Now, now you have these three here. If you wanted to go ahead and pattern that again, then what we need to go back and let's say edit. We can say right here, add additional direction, right? And then you uh, select what direction you want to pattern it in, just the Y direction. There you go. <laughs> All right, <laughs> a little finicky. And then we want to, let's say 10.5, if we had a big enough space to do that in. For example, uh, okay, let's say 11, 11, there you go. So now you got you get six from one. You have to do the work to get to the one and then you just simply make a pattern and you end up doing six. So obviously your cut time is gonna go up almost in a linear fashion. It's gonna be a little bit larger than a linear fashion because you got the same cuts, but then you have travel in between travel time. I mean, you can also adjust uh, how, it, how it cuts if you wanna you know, go by depth or go by island and things like that. So uh, I think this is really cool. So if you wanted to pound out six of these very quickly, you know, roughly, in about an hour, although I know that number is really high because uh, the machine actually moves a little bit faster than what Fusion is estimating right now, uh, but you can do that very easily. So it's super fun, super easy, and super quick in Fusion 360 to create these patterns uh, to go ahead and, and batch out a bunch of different projects without doing a lot of additional work. So if you, uh, if you need to create a bunch of projects or if you... Um, you know, you want to go ahead and batch things out, go ahead. I encourage you to check out Fusion 360 and the pattern capability in the manufacturing workspace. Well, that was the video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope that you learned something from the video. If you have a different process that you use or a process that you think that maybe I might benefit from, please leave your comments down below, and let's create a dialogue about the different ways that we can optimize the use of our CNC. All right, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for getting this far, and don't forget to be inspired.